Hi there, Mike Brady with Generosity Wealth Management, a comprehensive, full-service wealth management firm headquartered right here in Boulder, Colorado. And today I want to talk about where we are so far this year, uh, of course, including the third quarter of 2014, and also the next quarter where we are presently. Uh, let me expand a little bit into the next 18 months or so. But before I do all of that, I, I want to kind of look at the big picture for us to examine why it is that we're even doing this. And and I like to think of investing as uh, taking three steps forward, two steps back, or four steps forward, three steps back. And there are people who will say, no, 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 um, I can. I have this wonderful program, it's really exciting and sexy, and it's very tantalizing to say there'll be no steps back. But if we look at all the particular investments that are out there, um, they always have some kind of a jagged edge, meaning that they go up and then they give some down, and they go up and they give some down. And that's a part of it. And as part of this, uh, steps that I was talking about, four steps forward, three steps back. If the time that there's steps backwards um, is so uncomfortable and you're so focused on that, then you'll never have the joy of the steps forward. And those steps back might be one quarter, might be one year, might be a couple of years. I mean, historically, uh, in just the last 15 years or so, your 2000, 2001, 2002, those were three down years right in a row. Um, 2008 was a very painful down year. And 2011, we had a really painful third quarter of that year. But in general, it was pretty much just a, a break-even year in general. Okay, So for the last four or five uh, even six years or so, not counting 2008. So since 2008, we've had a generally trending up market. But that's not always the case. And this is nice that we've had these steps um, forward and relatively few steps backwards. And so as a matter of fact, it's so unusual right now that when it happens, we start to get concerned. We're like, oh my gosh, this is Armageddon. And so it's good for us to sit back, relax, and say, okay, is this new information, is this new data relevant enough that um, it changes my perspective that, wow, it's such a headwind that I don't think I'm going to be able to go forward any, any, anymore like I have been able to? Or is this just static? Is this just chaos out there that's normal for the market? And I'm going to jump right to the conclusion and tell you that I think it's the latter. Um, we have enjoyed a relatively calm situation the last five to six years. And any kind of a disruption of, a, of the Dow, 100, 200, 250 or so, that has been happening since the Dow was at 10,000 and 11,000 and 12 and 13. And now it's you know in the 16 and 17,000 range. And all along the way, there were people who were saying, no, it can't get any higher. Well, we're obviously at a high. It's going to go down, etc. And that's not necessarily the case. Why else would we be invested in the market if we didn't believe that sometime in the future it's going to be higher than it is today? Um, if we didn't believe that, then we should just keep our money in a safe or the mattress or someplace else where we can have absolutely no principal loss. What we can do as investors is uh, really watch our emotions and be the smart money. I'm going to put my quotes up there, the smart money, because... Uh, emotions cause your uh, average investor, um, your even I would even say some of your professional uh, investors to do the wrong things at the wrong time. When we look at money flows in and out of the market, you'll notice that in 1999, everyone was so ecstatic. I mean, the emotions were so very high on the technology and so much money was going in basically at the high. 2008, uh, at the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009, as we look at the markets, that was actually the perfect time to buy, but nobody um, wanted to buy at, at those points. They were, everybody was rushing for the door when really they were selling at the bottom and real people unfortunately um, buy at the top, which is what we don't want to do. That's why it's good for us to keep a long-term vision of what's going on and not be too distracted by the day-to-day, -day, I would even say the month and the quarterly numbers and have good managers, good goals, a good plan um, that takes into consideration macro events, okay, um, and, and stick to that. Sometimes the most difficult thing to do is to actually do nothing or to do or, or to um, uh, not overreact. It's sort of like um, if you're in a car and you're on some icy road and you're trying to get to a certain destination, the wind's blowing you left and right. 
uh, a real experienced driver is not going to overcorrect one way or the other. Yes, there's going to be minor corrections. Yes, you're going to be um, very diligent in how you get to that, that destination you know, down the road, but you're also going to understand, hey, wait a second, this gust is just happening, it's going to go away, and I believe that um, by not overreacting, I'm actually long-term going to be better for myself. This is what my 23 years of experience has shown me in that uh, when we watch out for some of the kind of sexy things that can be out there. Now, I got to tell you, I've sometimes been uh, real um, enticed by uh, a promise of um, the highest return out there with no volatility. Um, I've been, uh, I've seen these things, and I, I just don't believe that they're right for for my clients, and particularly at this particular moment in time. Um, a good composition of um, stock funds, bond funds, cash, a smattering of um, potentially some non-traded REITs may have uh, a place for a, a client if it makes sense. And of course, don't do anything until you uh, either talk with me or if you're my client, you know, to, to see if it makes sense. This is just very, very broad that I'm talking about. I really like some um, uh, business development companies, BDCs, um, that are out there that can add some extra yield as well. One um, statistic that I, I do want to throw out there is just to kind of give a, an example of the environment that we're in is if um, back in uh, 2007, October of 2007, the yield on a bond was such that if you needed $1,000 worth of income, how much do you think you would have to invest in order to get that $1,000? About $24,000. Okay. What about in... Five years later, in 2012, October, to get that same $1,000 worth of income, how much money would you have to, uh, to be invested in? $3.3 million is the answer. And it's so big because the yield went from 4% all the way down to practically zero. I mean, literally almost zero. And so when we look at all the various options out there in order to make money, to, um, there's, there's bonds out there, there's real estate, um, there are uh, investments, stock investments, etc. And so we have to, um, and if we're looking for a perfect answer, there simply isn't one. I mean, one of the parts of, I think, adult life is understanding that there are many times imperfect choices. We see this every time we go to the polls uh, for an election. Uh, no politician, no party, in my belief, you know, maybe you think differently, is perfect. I mean, there's always something that you disagree with them about. So therefore, we're picking the best of our options that are available to us. What's well, the same way from an investing point of view? You've got your bonds, you've got your stocks, you've got your cash, you've got your real estate, you've got your alternatives, etc. And each one has pros and cons, and it's determining which one is right for you. I mean, the yields that you're getting on bonds, very, very low, but I think it's part of a portfolio of a diversified portfolio. The bonds on CD, or sorry, not the bonds, the, the yields on CDs and money market are down to, to practically nothing. So as we're invested in the stock market for the long run, one of the things that comes with that, one of the disadvantages is a little bit more volatility. We don't have a guarantee of principle, okay? So we've got to be smart. We've got to be diversified, all right? Um, although that doesn't guarantee in a generally trending down market that you won't experience some losses, um, but we want to be diversified in order to, to tamper down some of that volatility. Um, you know, as, as I uh, started out the, the video with talking about taking four steps forward and three steps back, well, if you want to run and take 10 steps forward, that's okay. You just take a risk of sometimes taking nine steps backwards. And so that's not necessarily what everyone ought to do. And I, I think I want to bring some um, realism into uh, what our expectations should be. Warren Buffett, one of the uh, most successful managers out there in time, he has averaged a little over 8% uh, per year. And so for us to expect in the teens or in the 20s every single year is an unrealistic expectation that you will be disappointed and might cause you to do the wrong thing, which is to try to chase something or to someone who's going to promise you something that long term isn't going to isn't going to last. And while Warren Buffett was uh, making that eight percent return, he had he had times just in the last you know twenty twenty five years we had fifty percent declines, huge. And so I think that that's a very uncomfortable situation. I personally don't 
uh, want to position myself in client portfolios where we have that kind of volatility. And so I think um, by having a good diversified portfolio with good managers long term, we can hopefully start to narrow um, that band of, um, and unfortunately, sometimes giving up some of those high highs, but getting some of um, the low lows as well. Uh, so far this year, the markets are plus or minus a few percent, depending on what stock market index you want to look at. The bond market is positive for this year. I think going out 18 months, um, we will continue to um, have a, a good market. When I look at the yield curve, which is still a... Um, a regular uh, yield curve, which is great. It's not inverted. Um, when I look at, I'm going to throw some graphs up on there as well. When I look at uh, where we are from a, um, a quantitative easing, that has been uh, been easing off and will continue to uh, to go down to zero. And uh, I'm actually surprised we haven't had more um, reaction to it. When we look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals are still strong. Huge cash balances, uh, which is wonderful. Um, from a uh, from the balance sheets of corporations uh, point of view, uh, so I think that the fundamentals have not changed in three or four months. Yes, things are slowing down a little bit. I don't want to sit here and say that everything is wonderful. And sometimes I uh, am, I want to make sure that I don't give the impression of being Pollyannish and saying everything's perfect and wonderful out there. Um, if you're looking for a perfect world, if you're ever looking for the perfect storm in a positive direction, you're never going to get it. You're going to be disappointed every single time. So therefore, um, we have to look at it and we say, on balance, is it 51% more um, good than negative? Um, and if that's the case, then we adjust accordingly and we say, yeah, we're optimistic for the next uh, quarter and maybe even the next 18 months. I'm always open to feedback. I'm always open to um, a differing point of view. Um, please give me a call if you would like. One thing to watch out for is that we don't get um, so negative that we uh, have these scenarios that... Um, you know, we, we're, we're afraid um, to, to move forward into some things that might be volatile, that, that are not certain, but then we try to um, put, our, put ourselves in such a situation where we're, we want a warm, fuzzy blanket, and it costs us an awful lot for that. And so we want to be, um, anything is possible out there. The question is, what's the probability? And so, you know, I really deal with probabilities more than I do even possibilities, um, and yes, there's always those curves and those black swans, etc. One of the reasons why they're so, um, you know, they're called black swans is they're so, so very um, unique. And yes, they can be devastating, but we can't um, live our lives by only focusing on the absolute worst that can happen. Um, we have to prepare ourselves for that, but we also have to live within what's, uh, what's, what's probable out there. Mike Brady, Generosity Wealth Management, 303-747-6455. You have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye-bye.